What's good music creators, it's LaFontaine, music producer and mix engineer. And in today's video, I wanted to share with you guys five things to avoid in your mixes today. So number one, do not roll every single one of your audio tracks off to 150 hertz. I do not care if you've heard it from some producer or some engineer on YouTube or anywhere on the net telling you to roll everything off to 150 hertz. Yes. There are some instances and in their mixes, it may have worked to clear up their mix and to stop their mix sounding cloudy or muddy. And it may very well stop your mixes sounding cloudy and muddy too and give you a very clean mix. However, you will be left with a very lifeless, boring, thin sounding mix. I cannot stress this enough. You must use your ears. Your ears are the biggest tool in your arsenal when it comes to mixing. Yes, you can try a 150 hertz. You can make that cut. But if it does not go with your mix, don't just set and forget it because someone somewhere has told you to do that particular EQ move. Use and trust your ears at the end of the day because it's our jobs as mix engineers to balance the science and the art of music to deliver a desired mix for your client at the end of the day. You don't want everything sounding super clean or super perfect but you've lost so much vibe and so much feel for the actual song. It's your job to find the balance and the medium ground. I cannot stress that enough, guys. As an example, let's play this kick with 150 hertz rolled off and let's see how that sounds. And then I'll bypass the EQ so you can hear what it was sounding like originally and you'll be able to hear the difference. Now I'll bypass the effect. Now, if we were to use our ears, and as I've mixed this song previously, I found cutting 40 hertz and below to be more than adequate. And in a similar vein, just because you've heard producers or engineers tell you to cut or boost certain frequencies on certain elements, don't just copy them and set and forget. Again, use your ears. It may work for them, but it may not work for you in your mixes. So you must trust your ears and make that judgment call. Number two, do not gain stage every single audio track down to minus 18 dB. It's completely unnecessary. Again, this is another hot topic circulating the net from many producers and many engineers telling you to gain stage each and every single track down to minus 18 dB. For example, let's look at this clap right here. It's quite hot, so naturally I will reach for a game plugin and I will turn it down. But my go-to is not to try and hit the minus 18 dB mark. I will turn it down enough so by the time it runs through my drum bus and it hits my mix bus, it's not coming in too hot and I'm leaving myself adequate headroom. You'll be absolutely fine and the result will be great because I found when I was taking everything down to minus 18 dB and I was trying to compress things, for example, the compressor and it was acting weird. It was being, it was behaving very, very strange and it wasn't behaving how it should be. So however, yes, bring the gain down, but you do not need to bring every audio track down to minus 18 dBs. Don't just do things for doing its sake or someone else has told you to do it. It may ruin your mix. Number three, don't avoid using presets. Most plugins you'll pull up will come with a bunch of presets designed and assembled by many talented producers and engineers. And it's made it there for a reason. Don't feel embarrassed or don't feel scared to use presets. And you never know, you might stumble across something that sounds amazing and it might provide you with that X factor to bring your mix to life. That will separate a good, okay mix to a great, fantastic mix. So have an open mind, use more presets and let the creative juices flow. Mistake number four, not utilizing a powerful technique called automation. It's all very well, you've mixed your song, it sounds good, but you can't just have a static mix. You can't just leave it there. It will be two dimensional, it'll be flat, it'll be boring. Utilize automation, guys. Utilize certain phrases. Utilize guitar riffs, utilize drum fills, whatever you feel it needs to bring the mix to life, to make it sound more exciting. 
utilize automation. I'll show you one quick example of automation. It was on a particular phrase. I automated a delay throw. So I've soloed the vocal track so you can hear what's going on exactly. And then I'll exaggerate so you can really hear what's going on. Islands, baby. Are we vibes in? Islands. So listen to it again. We're listening for Bay Bear. Islands, baby. Are we vibes in? Hear that? Let me turn it up more. Islands, baby. Are we vibes in? Hear that, baby. Islands, baby. Are we vibes in? Now in context with the mix. So that's just one little idea when utilizing automation. The possibilities are endless when it comes to automation and it just brings the whole mix to life and it just separates the amateurs from the pros. It really does, guys. Mistake number five. When all is said and done, you finish your mix, you sit back in a studio, pop your headphones on or you're listening from your studio monitors and you're hearing it and you're just like, yep, it sounds great. Let's bounce it, export it, send it off. No, stop there. This was one of my biggest mistakes along the way. You must ensure your mix translates on as many devices as possible. It might sound great in your environment, on your set of speakers or on your headphones, but when you bring it to the car or you play it off your phone or your laptop speakers or a set of Bluetooth speakers, it would just fall apart and it will not sound as good as it was when you were in the studio. You must take your song, go and play it in the car, go and play it on the laptop, go and play it through your mobile phone, play it on your soundbar, go to your friend's house, play it off his headphones, play it off his system, play it off as many devices as possible to ensure your mix translates well. And when you hear some faults, jot it down, make a snag list. And then when you get back to the studio, you can correct all those mistakes and you can make the mix as perfect as can be. But just listening to it in your room, in your environment, on your speakers, that's a no-no. Play it back on as many devices as possible to ensure your mix translates the best it can. And on that final note, as always, many thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, peace.